go ahead and get started with the meeting for this week. I would like to welcome everyone to Laboratory of Redemption, week 30. My name is Kayvon Hill. I'm a part of the team here at the 360 Adjuster Academy. I am over in the marketing department. Um, this week, our topic for today, our meeting will be fearlessness. Um, I'll say what fearlessness means to me as an adjuster and just as a human being, period. One thing that I feel that as humans we should do in life is always attack our goals and our endeavors with confidence. Confidence helps you to perform and it helps you to succeed better than you would if you had the lack of confidence. And to go into our topic of fearlessness, to be fearless, you have to be confident. So when you're fearless, that means that you don't defeat yourself before you give the opportunity or the obstacle at hand to defeat you first. When you're fearless, you go into it being confident and you know that there's nothing that can stop you and that's attacking the head on being fearless. So for me, with being an adjuster, being fearless means going on a deployment, knowing that I am, um, I ha I'm very competent and I have the skills and I have the tools that I need to success to be successful and to last on that deployment. I'm fearless. I won't allow any situation or anything as far as claims piling up on me or you know uh, the the level of a claim, how difficult it is. I won't allow that to cause me to, you know, fold or crumble. I'll be fearless when I'm attacking all of my goals and my endeavors. So that, that's what fearlessness means to me, is just to be confident and to, you know, know that you can accomplish anything that you put your mind to. So um, to wrap that up, I will give you guys a brief introduction and a brief summary of my adjuster experience. I did acquire my adjuster license in September of 2021. I did go on my first deployment in May of 2022. So this May coming up will make two years that I've been an adjuster. My first deployment was to Minnesota. It was a very difficult deployment. I had to do farm and ranch, inspect large structures. It was, it was a lot that was thrown to me at once. Um, but I went into that deployment not knowing what to expect. But one thing that I can say is that I was fearless because I had so many odds and obstacles that I had faced leading to becoming an adjuster. And I was in a very bad place in my life. Financially, I was defeated in many ways. I was still fresh out of college, young man in the world, you know, trying to find my way. But I went into this situation knowing that there was nothing that I can lose. So I was fearless. And from that point on, from going on my first deployment, um, I did stay deployed for a year straight consecutively. I did go on multiple deployments leading up to my most recent deployment that I did work on where I, I worked in Indiana for seven months. It was a, a beautiful experience for me because, you know, my first couple of deployments only lasted about four weeks, which, you know, that that's a long time to, you know, stay somewhere for a month. But you're a good adjuster if you go on a deployment you're going to stay there until the end you know they they keep the good ones around so you know getting released from those deployments after you know a month and being in the first cut um it definitely did affect me mentally because it, it made me feel that I wasn't performing to the best of my abilities but you know everything is a learning experience and then to get to that most recent deployment where I did stay out there for seven months um that was the reassurance that I needed to to know that, you know, I made a, the good decision of becoming an adjuster and uh, I am competent enough and I am equipped with the skills and knowledge that I need to be successful in this industry. So that's a brief introduction about myself. Um, I, I would like to introduce you all to our mission statement and go over that with you all over here at 360 Adjuster Academy. Our mission statement is the mission of the 360 Adjuster Academy is to provide premier training and mentorship to new and existing independent insurance adjusters so that they can become subject matter experts within the insurance adjuster industry. Our core principles over at the 360 Adjuster Academy are faith, 
firm belief in something for which there is no proof, complete trust. Our second core principle is integrity, firm adherence to a code of especially moral or artistic values, and corruption. Our third principle is resilience, the ability to recover from or adjust easily to misfortunate or change, thriving in spite of circumstances. You have to be resilient in this industry, in life period. Our fourth principle is production. Production is the act or process of creating something of value, such as goods or services, closing claims, specifically in the adjuster industry. And those are our four core principles. Our business model is come find your vision within our vision. We're a very welcoming company. We welcome all adjusters, whether you're new, whether you're interested, you haven't even begun the process yet, come on over, we'll take good care of you. And we will help in the best way that we possibly can. So I would like to announce our guest speaker for today, Dr. Lee Richardson of the Brain Performance Center of Dallas, Texas. She will be speaking today on anxiety, growth mindset, and neuroplasticity. Um, before we go ahead and transition into our guest speaker for today, I would like to remind everyone in our meeting today to please fill out, fill out our feedback form. And if you do have any questions <laughs> that you need answers for, please feel free to drop those questions in our chat. Um, someone over here at our team will get back to you or uh, if someone's speaking and if I'm on, I, I will answer the question for you or will direct you in the right way. And also, if you guys do have any questions that you have for us, even after the meeting, please feel free to follow us on our socials and reach out to us on there. If you can stop by and drop us a like, a comment and share our pages. We are a growing company and we do appreciate all support, whether small or huge. So uh, if you can, please do that for us. We would truly appreciate that. So with that being said, I would like to transition over to our very own Ms. Candice. If you would like to come on and she will give a self-introduction of herself and then we'll go ahead and lead over uh, to our guest speaker. Sure, thank you. Um, hey guys, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm very excited, uh, definitely for us to get to the speaker next. But um, definitely will share a little information on myself. I'm with the training department. So you'll see my name on there as Coach KJoy due to that and a few other things that I also participate in. But as far as my insurance background goes, as many of you know, I've been in the industry for 18 years between auto and property, uh, as well as doing things at the desk and in the field, and then on to leadership for um, eight to nine years. So a very exciting time. I've learned a lot. I've gained a lot of knowledge and very excited to, you know, continue to be able to share that with you all and through the training department. But I will share in reference to what fearlessness means means to me. And um, I'm just going to say when I when this work came up, the first thing that came to mind was really just stepping out on risk and being willing to take and process whatever comes with that. So a lot of times when I think about fearlessness, I think about the fact that, uh, you know, like Kayvon said, you know, you're stepping out there with confidence. You definitely have to be willing to step through the process step by step. You don't always know what's on the other side of what we're walking into. So that risk is really just a, a going through a blind door a lot of times for listeners um, and deciding to stay with it step by step and seeing yourself through the process. Through that, I think it's so interesting that this is our word and then we have a speaker like we have tonight that's going to transition into talking about anxiety, stress, so many things that I'm fixing to go into her bio in reference to. Um, I'm personally excited, as you all know, in my own story, I've shared before that I've also experienced those same things. And so I'm more than excited to hear what she's going to say and also just the tools and resources for everybody moving forward with the idea of fearlessness and walking into new things. So without further ado, I'm gonna share the bio from Dr. Richardson before we bring her on. In 2009, Lee founded the Brain uh, Performance Center utilizing her extensive qualifications. That included an MBA, an MS in counseling and board certifications to offer cutting edge solutions for various brain problems, especially in Christ decision-making. As a renowned brain health expert, she shares her insights through national radio and television appearances. Her expertise extends to addressing anxiety, ADHD, depression, insomnia, and brain injury with tailored solutions for each challenge. Lee's unique strengths lies in her ability to connect with veterans, LGBTQ, and trauma individuals, as well as the neurodivergent, and earn their trust. 
Lee is also an author of Turn Your Brain On to Get Your Game On, a globally recognized speaker and a syndicated radio host for the Your Head podcast. She actively, act, uh, excuse me, she actively educates the public on the impact of lifestyle choices and environmental factors on brain health through her YouTube channel. So without further ado, team, can we please welcome Dr. Richardson? Well, I know who that is in the background. There's no doubt. That's Mr. Brock. <laughs> But thank you all. Thank you all for inviting me. And, and it is, as, as you pointed out, it's a great, the subject matter, the synergy between fearlessness and anxiety is so strong. And, you know, I think that we all, the reason I wrote the book, Turn Your Brain On to Get Your Game On, is because I think we all are going to experience times in our life when things aren't okay. And you know what? It's okay to not be okay as long as you do something about it. That's where it comes in. And you can, because whether you're feeling anxiety, depression, ADHD, insomnia, autism, you know, you've just got a dysregulated brain. And there are four things that put a brain into a dysregulated state. The first is genetics. You know, I've been working in this field since 2005, and that used to be a really lonely conversation back in 2005 about, you know, mental health. And that was because there was so much negative stigma associated with it. So in 2009, when I opened my own practice, I transitioned. I didn't want to talk about mental health anymore. I want to talk about brain health because the brain is an organ, just like the heart. And if we stop and we recognize that, if you think there's something wrong with your heart, how long does it take you to get an appointment with a doctor? But, you know, mm, your brain's not working so good. You, you know, you're anxious. You got some depression. You can't pull it together. You don't do that. You have a nasty conversation with yourself. Come on, suck it up, buttercup. Power through, man. And that is inappropriate conversation. And in the last year, I've transitioned. I've moved from brain health to brain capital. And that's what everybody here tonight wants to do, is to build their brain capital so that they can build their business. Think. So, you know, when we talk, when we listen and we talk about anxiety, to me, it's a dysregulated brain. And it means that we, does any, is there anybody out there that's never felt a little bit of anxiety? Because I have. And I do. I mean, it's life, man. And it, it, doing the work that we do at the Brain Performance Center, we calm that brain down. But I never claim, oh, You'll never feel anxious again because you will. And that ties into those four things that puts a brain in a dysregulated state. Genetics, physical head trauma. Anytime you hit your head, you change the way the brain's wiring and firing. I've been in ICU twice with brain injury. Don't wish that on you, but I understand what physical head trauma does to the brain. The third is emotional trauma. Don't wish that on you either, but in reality, if you're living life, you're going to experience some emotional trauma. And then the fourth is stress. And, you know, in the since COVID-19, we have all met stress in a new dimension. And how you deal with that and how you make the most of that really depends upon your mindset. And there's all kinds of mindsets that we can have. I mean, I have just recently finished my PhD program and my dissertation was about the experience that organizational leaders have with decision-making in a crisis. And I was very blessed. I had, a, I had a, a, a lady and I loved it. She was a lady that was a general in the army and she talked about it. And it's all about the mindset that you have. And in the military, you get extensive training. And, 
you train, you train, you train, you train so that you're ready to deal with a situation. Unfortunately, we don't get that in everyday life. But by understanding that who's, who's in charge of your mental health? You are. I am. I can take control of that. And that control starts with accepting. Yeah, I'm struggling. I'm going through some hard times, you know, and, and thank you for the, the information that was shared in the introduction, you know, because I'm not saying that you had any anxiety after being re returned from deployment in four weeks, but I would have because it comes that that self-doubt. You know, you start riding that roller coaster, fight, flight, fear, fight, flight, fear. And that's the communication between the brain and the body. And recognize that. Be aware of that. And because it's just like those negative thoughts. We all have them. I started my I started a cash business in 2009. After 2008, the financial disaster. And man, I had the worst case of the shoulds. Lee, you should do that. You should do that. First then I didn't do it. And then I had the worst case of the shame and the blame. Well, shame on you. You didn't do it. It's all your fault. And I realized, you know what? Mm, no shit's got to go. They're, they're sucking the life out of me. And those are negative thoughts. We all have them. And I encourage you all to think about the negative thoughts that you have. And capture. I call them ants. Automatic negative thoughts. They go through your head so fast and furious, you don't even know they're there. But if you if you learn to recognize them, you can catch them. And when you can catch them, you can reframe them and you can redirect them. And that ties a lot into anxiety. And that ties a lot into the mindset that you, that you have. And some of us mm, get hung up in that perfection you know, it's, it's all, and that's all or nothing thinking. It's got to just be boom, ba boom, ba boom, or it's nothing. Eh, that's not going to get you far. That's black or white thinking. There's all kinds of names for it. But pay attention to the thoughts that go through your head and pay attention, you know, to those negative conversations that you have with yourself. And I hope that you're telling me you don't have any, but I don't believe it. Because you're human and we're all human. And, and the mindset that you have, you know, as I, I mentioned in the beginning, the military, they stay. Those people stay in a crisis mindset because they have to. But we don't have to. You know, we need to stay instead of a restricted mindset. We need to stay in a mindset for growth. And that, you know, that can start with, do you have a challenge? Or do you have an opportunity? How do you see it? How do you perceive it? And when you when you perceive that opportunity, use your use your the, the strongest power that you have, or is your power of observation? And I call that in my dissertation, I call that situational awareness. And it's nothing more than walking into the room and read in the room. Okay, who's here? Who do, you know, I was going to go talk to her, but mm, she's all like this. Mm, I don't want to talk to her. I want to talk to somebody that's a little more open to receive my energy. That's situational awareness. And to keep a growth mindset going, you need that. You need to go in and pay attention. Read the room. Interpret that. Don't let... And I don't mean to get the finger going at you, but don't let your own biases interfere because they will. And we all have them. We, we, I just came back. I was very blessed. I got to go spend a week in, with my son and his husband in Nice where they have just moved. Couldn't understand a word anybody was saying. And luckily, my son-in-law is a native. He speaks the language. But, you know, when I couldn't understand them, I'm like, what are they thinking? 
What are they saying? Are they saying I'm doing this the wrong way? Are they poking fun at me? Because I don't know, you know, and blah, 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 blah. Negative thoughts. We all have them. So, and then I realized, you know what? I'm going to choose to believe that they think I am the most pleasant visitor that has ever been there. I'm going to be so nice. Even though we can't sp it speak the language, I can reach it. I can outstretch a hand. I can shake your hand. I can smile. I can go eyeball to eyeball with you. And, and in, in developing your mindset, use those powers of observation. Tap into what you see, you know, what you feel. I always encourage my clients to close your eyes, you know, just sit down and close your eyes. Take a deep breath, get grounded and think about, you know, what do I feel right now? I feel hot because I'm upstairs, you know, and how heat rises. Um, but what do I see? And what do I smell? What do I hear? You know, use those powers of observation to shape your mindset. And one thing that will feed into that very strongly is the neuroplasticity that you have in the brain. And neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to change. Do any of you ever feel like your brain is stuck? Well, I mean, Travis, you're the, you're, you, you deal with it more than anybody I've ever met. And that's a whole nother story, but we won't go there. But, but I think we all feel stuck sometimes. I, I'm just finishing up that, just finished up that dissertation and I got real stuck, you know, and, and but what the way that I, you can create change in the brain is by creating neuroplasticity. Every single one of you can work on that. And the way that you do that is you challenge the brain to do something different. In the last month, I decided that I needed, I'm right-handed. And instead of using my right hand for my mouse, I was gonna use my left hand. And let me tell you something, that's a lot harder than it sounds. Try it. And it, I mean, you don't have to go to that extreme. So you brush your teeth with your right hand, brush your teeth with your left hand. You love to cook. What's what's a cuisine that you've never cooked? I love Thai food. I've never cooked it. Not that I'm going to do that, but, but go to your comfort zone. You know, learning a new language, and I'm not going to do that either. <laughs> but, but learning anything new will stretch that brain and it will increase your neuroplasticity. And you can do it, you know, the way that I did. Okay, I'm going to use my left hand for my mouse instead of my right hand. I have two dogs that I walk every morning and every evening. Instead of walking them both in the same hand, I'm going to separate my leashes. I'm going to, you know, just doing something that challenges the brain. Read something that you've never read before. And there are two things that I really recommend. And one is mindfulness. And, you know, mindfulness in the last few years has been a big buzzword. But mindfulness is nothing more than staying present in the moment. And Harvard Business Review, that's become my best friend getting through this dissertation. And they say 80% of us are either lost in the past, we're reliving everything we didn't do right, or we're worried about the future. We can't stay present in the moment. And I really encourage you to focus on staying present in the moment. And for some people, journaling is a helps a lot you know just writing about what happened and how you feel about it for me I just use simple gratefulness what am I grateful for at the end of every day what are the three things that I'm grateful for and I got to tell you something there's never anything big I haven't won the lotto and I'm not going to win the lotto and there's never anything huge but what makes my life go really, really nicely is the little things. Oh my gosh, I went to the grocery store 
I got behind that lady that had 20 things and she looked at me and she said, go ahead. Thank you so much. Or I'm pulling out of the parking lot and I, and I, I can see all this traffic coming at me and somebody stops, waves me on. Thank you so much. And, you know, it's the little things in life. So I encourage you at the end of the day to stop and just ask yourself, what are three good things that happened today? Oh my gosh, I got this email. It was the nicest email. Or, you know, I ran into somebody that I haven't seen in a while and I reconnected with them and that created, that made me feel more connected. I was feeling a little bit lonely when I walked into that, that building. So those are things that, that you are in control of and that you can focus on and being grateful and thankful and appreciative will get you. And I'm sure, you know, we all know this. You can catch more bees with honey than you can salt. And so that's something, you know, that I really encourage you to think about. The, I, I guess the most important thing and message that I have is acceptance. Accept yourself for where you are and who you are at the moment. And accept the fact that who's in charge of that? If you don't like it, who can make that change? You can. And, and you can, but I'll tell you this, you can't do it on your own. You can't do it all by yourself. You don't have to go see a professional like me. You got, look at you. There's a bunch of you. You got colleagues, you got associates. Don't, I, my one piece of advice is let everybody stay in their line in their lane. Don't take your partner and say, okay, you know, you're going to be my therapist. Or don't take your child or your parent. Everybody needs to stay in their lane. But you've got on a spiritual side, you've got pastors, you've got people that you can reach out to, you've got colleagues that you can reach out to. You know, and I heard an interesting thing today at the women's group at church. And I thought, mm, I'm going to steal that. And she talked about, we were talking about racism and how it doesn't matter what your color is, what your gender is. It, racism is still is a lie. You know, it's still alive and kicking. And she said, to fight it, you got to use the four E's. Gosh, I hope I can remember. So the first, so the first was to, Ex educate, Ex educate yourself. If you don't understand what's going on with uh, someone that's a different gender or someone that has a different sexual identity, research it. Take the, make the effort and research it. Educate. The second was experience it. Reach out to somebody and say, and I'm probably not doing justice to this the way the lady did today, but I'm giving it my shot, but experience it. Reach out to somebody and say, hey, you know, I've never been in that situation. I don't know what that's like. Can you share that with me? So it's educate, experience. And the third was, I don't know the third, remember that. But the fourth was empathy, have empathy empathize you know and there's a big difference between being sympathetic with somebody and empathizing with somebody oh man I'm so sorry Travis I'm so sorry you had that big day that bad bad day you know no you know hey Travis I can't imagine how you felt after that happened today but I'd like to I'd like to understand it so Recognize there's a difference between being sympathetic for somebody and empathizing with somebody, trying to understand how they feel, because that is what it all boils down to. We all have feelings. We may not want them, but we do, and we all have to learn how to accept them and manage them on a conscious level. And I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to give you one, one parting fact. Every minute, your brain is capable of taking in 11 million bit, bits of data. Research says that somewhere between 40 
and 126 can go to a conscious level. I think it's 40, but you don't have to do the math. Where does it all go? That subconscious. So you got it. You got to pay attention to that subconscious. If you have a spiritual side, that's a great way to tap into it. So with those words, I'll be quiet. If anybody has a question, I'm happy to entertain it. And if not, I thank you for your time and your presence tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate that, Ms. Richardson. That was awesome. Do we have any questions? Travis. I do. Uh, I want to say this for sure to be true. Um, Dr. Richardson is a big deal. She's a big deal because without her, this wouldn't happen. Without this, without her in my life, this would not have happened. Here's why. Because during the process of becoming an adjuster, I was in a very, very dark, crazy spot. But however, through random fate doing Uber driving, I was able to drop someone off over to her office. And I was like, what in the world is this? You know, I thought I was going to become like a uh, a brain doctor, the gentleman. He, he was a, a student at SMU University. So I said, okay, what are you doing? So I walked in there and I said, oh, this sounds interesting. Got to talking and, and then all of a sudden I said, you know what? My brain, I got some fog in my brain. I'm not doing too good. So I've been a patient with her or a client, if you will, however you want to call it, since 2016. I go every year. I do 20 sessions every year, every year, as far as to um, get thoughts together. And she actually talked me through this insurance adjusting process. She talked me through it because I had the idea, but I didn't know I could do it. So I wanted to say thank you so much for what you do. You definitely uh, was my first official counselor. So I, I do appreciate you so much. I just wanted to let you know that. Well, thank you. And Travis, you're so, I admire you because you're so open and honest and transparent and you don't have to do it every year. You know, most people get their brain regulated and I never see them again, but your commitment to being your best self and to being as authentic and genuine to yourself as you can, as you can be, it's inspiring. So thank you. Thank you all for listening tonight. I wish you the absolute best. And I'll leave you with a few words, and that is be true to yourself. 100%. All right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm so sorry. I do have one question if you have a few more minutes. Of um, course. My question is how do you regulate your brain, like on the regular, I guess? Well, the, the, you know, there's ways that you do it. At the Brain Performance Center, we train the brain to be in a regulated state, but not everybody has the time, the energy, wants to, to invest in, in getting their brain in a regulated state. So if, if you don't, the one thing that I would encourage you to do every single day, check in with yourself. Ask yourself, how are you doing? Oh my gosh, I did so much radio this week about Elmo. I mean, I know who Elmo is. Elmo put out on social media. Uh, right. How you doing? Yeah. Do you know how many people responded to Elmo? Yeah. Oh well, if I could get 1% of that, I'd be so happy. But, but when I saw that, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what I tell everybody to do. Check in with yourself. Ask yourself, how am I doing? What do you need today? Oh my God. I haven't been, at, I haven't been outside in the sunshine in three days. I just need to feel it on my back. You know, I've been so busy working. I haven't taken the time to really connect with a friend. I'm lonely. The Surgeon General back in May of last year, 2023, declared loneliness as a national concern. So check in with yourself and say, what do I need? Do I need to tap into my spiritual side? Do I do I need to get to sleep? Have you know have my lifestyle choices gone down the tube? So if you can do one thing to get a regulated brain, check in with yourself. Okay, and here's the hard part: listen, listen to the answer. 
because that is the hard part. We all, I honestly believe we all know if we stop and we take the time to check in with ourselves, use those power of observations that we talked about in the beginning, we know what we need. But then we have to do it. I don't know if I answered your question, but. You want to do like two more questions and then go ahead and let you uh, let you go ahead and buy your night. Is sure. that OK? Sure. Any questions? Nope, none. All right. I'll ask. Well, I'll, I'll throw one out there. In reference to anxiety, do you have any quick resources you would share or tips for people yes, with anxiety? I do. Yes, I do. So when you get anxious, what happens is you start breathing real short and choppy breaths. We all do. And this is a true fact. 65% of the calls that go into 911 that say, I'm having a heart attack, I'm having a heart attack. They're not having a heart attack. They're having a panic attack. Because you start taking those, those real short ch choppy breaths, then your heart starts beating really, really fast. And you do think that you're having a heart attack. So when you feel that anxiety, there's, you know, stop, get grounded. The way that I get grounded is I actually take my shoes off. I put my feet on the floor. Oh, and, and if I can, I go outside stand on the ground I feel that Schumann wave that's the energetic wave that rotates the earth stand on the ground and, and I like to sit I like to put my hands on my knees I don't know why but I just feel more connected when my hands are my, on my knees and I close my eyes and I breathe and when I'm talking to you I have to be taking 12 to 14 breaths a minute to spit everything out my optimal breath rate, your optimal breath rate is between four and seven breaths a minute. So you've really got to slow that breath rate down. And I mean, I'm very much into touch and feel. Put, I'll put my hand around my belly button. And can I feel when I blow out that air? Do I feel that belly button go in? And when I breathe it in, you got to push it down, push it down to your diaphragm. Do I feel that belly button go out? Because if you change your breath rate, you can change your heart rate. And when you change your heart, you get those breath rate and that heart rate to dance together, you're creating heart rate variability. That is a sign of awareness, of wellness. That will calm that anxiety down. It really, it, it honestly will. You slow your breath rate down, you'll slow your heart rate down, and you feel, and it takes focus. It, it takes a lot of focus to be able to slow your breath rate down. The good news is, is there's some apps that you can get for breathing. And I, 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 I'm a big believer, you know, people say, oh, you can't use apps for breathing or mindfulness. Yeah, you can, because I couldn't learn, I, I tried to, to learn mindfulness go sit in a dark room while by myself and connect. Yeah, it didn't work for me. But I got an app on my phone and I did learn. And with using that app, I don't use it anymore. I'm thankful. I'm so proud to say. But, you know, get get in touch with yourself. And if you get in touch with yourself, you can manage that anxiety. And think about those negative thoughts. Catch those little ants. You do that, it'll help you, man. And and just ask somebody, you know, why do you ask people, what do you see? You know, all of a sudden I'm pissed off. What happened? What did you see? Well, I don't know. We were talking about the last deployment you were on, and all of a sudden you went south. So back to those, you know, tap into your colleagues and don't be afraid. And again, I commend Travis for being, he's so open and he's so transparent about what he experienced and what he did about it. And every single one of you can do, can improve your brain capital. Now, whether you 
choose to do that with the Brain Performance Center, or you choose to work on an individual plan, you can do that. You know, get a coach. I, I do coaching one session a month to hold you accountable. You can do it, but you have to commit to listening to yourself. And you know what it usually boils down to? Mm -hmm. Lifestyle choices. Okay, doctor, I have a question. Okay. This is Ricky Banks. How are you? I've been to you before. Oh, I know you, Ricky. <laughs> how the heck are you? I'm doing just fine. Look, um, how many uh, visits do you think a person should make to you per year? I think, a per, I mean, I think a, on the average, people come in a year and they'll do 25 visits. And, but on the, but usually I don't see them like I see Travis. I mean, people come and they go. And, and I'm all for that because my goal is to teach you self-regulation and to give you the tools that you need to keep yourself in a regulated state. Now, life gets in the way of that. I mean, and it's an election year. And we, it, it, it's those things in our environment that, that really get us, that we react to. And that we let change our thinking. We let that influence us. And that's our choice. But to answer your question, 25 times and you should be good. Okay. And also, um, you know, in the past, my uh, focus has been on memory enhancement. Mm -hmm. So how many different sections of the brain do you target when you are doing your treatments? Everything. I mean, because memory enhancement, Ricky, it, memory is a whole brain function because you got emotional memory, you've got visual memory, you've got auditory memory. You know, I remember when you said that to me, that's auditory memory. So it, it, it's how you process information. The back of your head is where you process everything. The front of your head is where you use it. So when, when, in the training that we do, at the Brain Performance Center, we do whole brain training. So we're training all of it because if you can't process it, you sure as heck can't remember it. <laughs> That's right. Okay. I thank you. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Well, it was so nice to see you tonight. Thank you all so right. much. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you all. You've been very patient. You've let me but my passion, I love to talk brain health. Now it's brain capital. Invest in yourself. Because if you don't invest in yourself, who will? All right. Good night. Good night. Thank you so much, Ms. Richardson. Doctor. Good night. You're Deliver. so welcome. Thank you all for listening. Yes, ma'am. You're Absolutely. welcome. All right. So just another quick reminder for everyone uh, that's in the meeting tonight. Um, I would like to say, please fill out our feedback form if you can for us. Um, and uh, I would like to, again, thank you, uh, Dr. Lee Richardson, for coming on and sharing that great information with us. I believe that, you know, uh, mindfulness and just brain health is very important, especially in the industry that we work in as adjusters. You know, our, our minds are running at a thousand miles per minute. So uh, it's a lot that we have to do. Um, and, you know, anxiety is definitely something uh, that plays a pivotal role in being an adjuster. You know, when you have a lot of responsibilities and a lot of things um, going on, you're very anxious, you know. So speaking for myself personally, I go to sleep some nights and I even have dreams about claims that I need to close or if I call the agent on time or something like that. So I truly do uh, appreciate yep. that information that I definitely need to be present with myself. So thank you again. Um, but to conclude our meeting for today, um, I would like to also remind everyone uh, as deployments are starting to pick up again, um, I want to challenge everyone in here as we have been for uh, the last 30 meetings that we've had. Uh, if you guys can please challenge yourself to make that 100K club. We, we, we're trying to accomplish the goal in here as adjusters um, to, you know, reach that 
milestone of making a hundred thousand dollars in a month it's attainable it is achievable and we are challenging everyone in here to do so and myself personally i can't wait to get back out there because i want to challenge travis gotta beat you to it man <laughs> so everyone else in here yeah, it's okay well i guess i gotta go harder then that's cool yeah yeah it's a it's a, it's a challenge right you know friendly I'm competition I'm sounds coming. like sounds like a it's, challenge it's not, to it's, me. Not friendly, it's not friendly though i'm, I'm taking i'm coming too yeah. Okay, you you get you something tonight. Tyree, where you at Tyree? Sterling? Dimitri over or something? Right. Still something to smoke too? Huh? I like that challenge for sure. Man, yeah. you know, that's but that's crazy, man. I am I'm, I'm definitely uh I'm feeling that energy. I'm feeling it for sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh to everyone else, you know, even if you you haven't started your first deployment yet. You know, when you get out there, challenge yourself. Don't don't settle for the bare minimum, the hourly pay. Try to get out there and get as much experience as possible and sharpen your skills. That way you can feel comfortable enough to go proponent, which is basically like a commission-based, what they call a fee schedule. And, you know, get out there and just maximize you know, your time and, and what you can do in a day. So we want to continue to push that uh, to challenge everyone in here to that 100K club. And I also would like to uh, remind everyone we will be meeting again next Sunday. So um, everyone else that's that's in here, you are more than welcome. Please come and join us again uh, next week for another episode of Laboratory of Redemption. Again, um, if someone can drop our socials in the chat for us, please. Uh, for everyone that's in here, if you can go ahead and please uh, pass by our pages, our social media, and drop us a like, a comment. And a follow, we truly appreciate that as we are a growing business. And next week, uh, we will be having another guest speaker. It will be Dr. Cedric Maurice Brock. He will be coming on to give us some grateful, uh, some great information. So if you can attend next week, please come on and, and come and you know join us once again. So that's all that we have for this week, this edition of Laboratory of Redemption. If anyone has any other questions um, before we get off, go ahead and feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, someone will get back to you as soon as possible. But I would like to thank everyone for joining us this week. Again, thank you, uh, Dr. Lee Richardson, for joining us as well. Truly appreciate that information. So with that being said, that's all that we have for this week. Hope everyone has a great Sunday.